Hello, my name's Lewis, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you the EM1 Mark III. This camera then is built for the professionals and features some of the best tech from its bigger brother, the EM1X, puts them in a much more streamlined, compact, and lightweight system. And just because it's smaller and lightweight doesn't mean it's any less reliable. It's a fully magnesium body with market leading weather sealing as well. So you're looking at an IPX1 rated, so even if you are out in the worst of the rain, you know that this thing will never let you down. This also translates to how the camera performs. So it is warranted to up to 400,000 shutter actuations. So for those professionals there that will be using this day in, day out, you know that it isn't going to let you down at all. It's got the TruePic 9 processor, which is the latest in its class at the moment. This enables it then to perform to that quality that you would expect in terms of reliability, whether it be autofocus, low light performance, or even the speed of it, how quickly it takes the photographs. Speaking of speed and performance then, it will shoot up to 60 photos a second, which is currently the quickest out there on the market. If you are wanting autofocus or continuous focus, then you can knock it down to 18 frames a second and ensure that the tracking performance and reliability will be maintained. So if you are looking at things like sports or tracking or birds of prey or whatever it may be, 18 frames a second will enable you to have full tracking facilities. So talking of the focus performance then, we have 121 autofocus points. They are all cross type and they are all contrast and phase detection, which all come into play when you take into account the new face and eye priority detection from the autofocus algorithms, which means that no matter what you're photographing, the focus and reliability will be absolutely on point, consistent and reliable every single time. So you can either use the touch screen as you have done in all the other previous models, but this has taken the joystick from the EM1X, which basically means you can move the focus point around quickly and easily when you're out there, even if you've got gloves on when you're out in the wilderness or wherever you may be. So you know the camera is going to keep up with you regardless of how fast you can shoot. If you can't quite shoot quick enough though, and you are trying to photograph something that is relying on your reaction times, then this has got you covered here as well. This has got a feature called Pro Capture, which will capture up to 35 photographs before you even press the shutter button. And it'll do this at a rate of 60 frames a second, which means you can go back in time if you do miss that crucial point. So you know that this will not miss the moment, even if you do. Now, if you're not into sports and you're not bothered about it being the fastest camera in the world and you are more of a landscape user, then we've got you covered here as well. So this features things like the high res mode. So although it features a native 20 megapixel straight out of the sensor, you can also shoot up to 80 megapixels using high res mode, which will move the sensor in half a pixel in each direction and take up to 16 photographs, depending on which mode you're in. To get the 80 megapixel, you do need to be on a tripod, but not everybody wants to carry the tripod around with them. So you can do it handheld now in this one, which will limit it to 50 megapixels, but you're still getting 50 megapixels in RAW, handheld without having to carry any extra equipment around with you. And if you wanted to do long exposures, you can use a feature in here called Live ND, which basically replicates the effect that you would get from a neutral density filter. There is anything from ND2 to ND32, and you can see this live on screen. Again, the clue is in the name of Live ND. So what it means is that before you even take the photograph, you can see this slow shutter speed effect of the waterfall or the movement or whatever it is that you're taking a photograph of. You can see how blurry that goes as you're changing the shutter speed before you take the picture. This means that you can do your long exposures, your landscapes, all this type of thing in the daytime with a slow exposure without having to carry around any extra equipment. Again, keeping the whole camera bag nice and lightweight and ready to go. If you want to take those landscapes into the night, then we have got you covered here as well. So you've got astrophotography features such as live composite, live time and live bulb, which will basically show you the live development of the image on the screen so you can stop it when you're ready. Some features like live composite will even stop it overexpose it. So you can leave it running for up to six and a half hours when plugged into a power bank to get a six and a half hour long exposure without worrying about it overexposing. You just think about the star trails that you could get with that. Now, when it comes to taking photographs of stars, there is a thing called Starry Sky Autofocus, which will enable it to focus on the stars nice and easily and reliably. So you don't have to waste your time trying to manually focus on those stars. This autofocus system all sounds clever and fast and reliable, but this also works with video. Now, speaking of video, we do have up to cinema 4K quality here. 
which features the OM Log 400, which will have looked ready to download if you are the avid movie maker. But it will also shoot 120 frames a second if you're wanting to do some of the slow motion things. Now this is a true video capable kit because it has microphone import, but also has headphone out. So you can monitor the audio levels to ensure that you're getting that crisp audio as well before you hit record. When you are shooting video, you can also take advantage of the in-body image stabilizer, which at the moment is class leading with up to seven and a half stops of image stabilizer. Just to put that into perspective, that enables most people to get a shutter speed of around one or two seconds handheld with no motion blur. It will give you seven stops in the body and if you pair it with other lenses again, that's where you will get the seven and a half stops. Now, if you are new to this system, then you may well be expecting to buy lenses that have got image stabilizer in there to do it at all. But no, no matter what lens you put on the body, you will get the seven stops of image stabilizer again, because it's in the body. It's the same technology that gives us the movement of the sensor for the high resolution mode. But now instead of moving half a pixel in each direction, what it does is when you move this way, the sensor will move that way to combat your movement. It's a really clever thing to see and works perfectly, especially for video, because you can get these gimbal crane movements without actually having any extra equipment. Now, when you are out taking photographs professionally, you don't even have to worry about the battery life. Now, it does have a BLH1 battery, which will take up to 420 shots on a single charge, but you can charge it via USB. And if you get high power power bank, you can even power the camera solely from the power bank, which could last you for hours and hours and hours, depending on which power bank you use. But it also means that if you are on the way to the job and you realize one battery is dead, you could plug it into the cigarette lighter on your car or any USB port that you may have to get it charged up en route. If you are wanting to charge it at home though, it does come with a fast charger which will fully charge the battery in just two hours. So I think we can all agree then that this is an absolute powerhouse of a camera. It takes the best features from the EM1 Mark II and puts them into a much smaller, lighter weight system. I hope this video has answered a few questions for you. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.